Hello. Hey, Alan. I hope it works this time. Yeah, I hope so. Maybe it's just the internet connection being quite far away. So a little bit of hiccups left, well, right, and center. I have a feeling it's my. Uh, it was my computer. I think there was a glitch, and it se everything seems to be working really well now. But uh, okay. th thanks so much for uh, for for visiting with me today, Mark. I know you're a busy man, so I really appreciate your time. And now no you're, in you're in Hong Kong now, eh? Yes, I am actually. It's actually eleven. It's quarter past eleven here. Actually, I thought it was ten, but it's eleven. <laughs> so, so you're you're ready to hit the sack, and here I am, uh, first thing in the morning, uh, ready to go. But uh, I really appreciate this. Now, when are you going to be back in the United States again? I'm flying back on the sixteenth of April. Um, so I'll have a few days to recover or recuperate before High Point. Oh and yeah. Get ready for the market, and then I'll probably be in the U.S. for for at least two months, then coming back to China again. So, wow. so I usually kind of have a pattern of uh, two months in the U.S., then I'll spend four weeks back in China, and then two months back in the U.S., and four weeks back in China. So it's just kind of like that, <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. Oh, but, yeah, my you get goodness. <laughs> well, good for you. And, and uh, I know that uh, you don't have kids to tie you down and make you feel guilty for not being home, so you've got that freedom yes. to roam around as much as you do. That's great. Now, yeah, I thought uh, it's nice to get young and then get it over and done with. So. <laughs> well, I uh, I'd like to introduce you first of all to to my viewers. You're you're the COO of at, at Cozia, correct? That is correct. And uh, and I thought maybe uh, and, and you live in Hong Kong as you just explained, and you you're very intimately uh, involved in the in the process and the manufacturing and in the whole the whole process of the creation of the Cozia line of chairs. And that's why yeah. I'm so excited to talk to you. Now, you and I had met uh, back in August, I believe, at the uh, at the furniture market in Las Vegas and uh, had a wonderful – I just really enjoyed that visit. I wish we could have recorded that. Uh, I, I, yeah. wish I, I hope I can remember some of the questions that we – that we chit-chatted about, but I really enjoyed your candor and uh, and and the inf information you gave. And you know, to be honest, you're the first guy I'd ever met that actually uh, worked uh, on on a day. For the most part, when you're in Hong Kong, you work on a day-to-day -day basis in the in the actual manufacturing plant, don't you? Yeah, the actual manufacturing facility is located in Xiamen in China. So uh, home is home, technically home is Hong Kong. So. Usually I spend, when I travel back for a month, I will spend probably a good two weeks in China at the factory, and then I'll come home from, and relax a little bit in Hong Kong for a couple of weeks before I head back to the U.S. But, um, you know, Cos Cosia is, is, is owned by the manufacturing facility. You know, we are a manufacturer of massage, robotic massage chairs. We're not, a dis not just a distribution. We do run a distribution center in the U.S., but technically... When you speak of Cozia, you're speaking directly to the manufacturer. So I work for the manufacturer in China, and my role as, is running the Cozia division. So I actually went to the U.S. to set up the entire Cozia division, got all the staff people set up in, in America, got all the distribution side set up in America. But this is a you know, Cozia is a factory direct fa factory operation. Now, what is the history of Cozia? How did Cozia come to be? Now, I know there was some uh, some uh, relationship in the past with another company that uh, that went out of business, and then Cozia kind of yep. just took over the whole distribution arm. Could you explain to me how how Cozia came to be? Um, basically, what happened was we were partnered with Berkline Bench Benchcraft. If you remember, they were kind of like a. Yep. A, a motion furniture company that specialized in sort of innovative furniture, the furniture with function. So, you know, they were based out of uh, Tennessee in uh, Morristown, and they went bankrupt uh, back in, I believe, uh, 2010. Um, so they ceased to exist. So we were handling the servicing side for them in the U.S. for the massage chair division only. And what happened was, obviously, we were producing the products for them on, on – producing the products on their behalf as well, but it was technically, it was a Cozia branded product, uh, was actually, sorry, it was a Berkline branded product manufactured by Cozia. And what happened was, you know, a lot of the retailers that started doing this pro, starting doing the massage share program with Berkline, they liked the program so much and was very successful that when Berkline went out of business, they all came directly to us and asked us, if, you know, where could they, could they still continue to buy this product? So what happened at that time, then I decided it was, was feasible to set up a distribution center 
in America. So it took me about three months to get everything set up, have product shipped from China to the US, have the Cozier branded product available, and we started the business based on the old Berkline dealer network. And we actually got a lot of the rep, uh, like old Berkline reps on board to work the Cozier line, and then it just went from there. So. And so you've been at it since Berkline went out in 2010. When did Cozier officially start as their own distribution arm here in the U.S.? It's basically right after Co uh, Berkline went out of, went out of business. Yeah. So it was Cozier in 2010. Was, yeah. So Cozier's Cozier's brand was actually set up in 2008 in the U.S. And at that time. We had a different division that was mainly trying to sell kind of uh, furniture products, and it wasn't really very successful. But we kept the Cozier brand, and we were handling the after-sales service on the robotic massage chairs, and we partnered with Berkline. And that partnership uh -huh. with Berkline lasted about 12 to 14 months. I think it was 14 months uh, until they just you know, closed up shop. I mean, it was kind okay. of uh, suddenly that happened. You know, they didn't give anybody notice, and again, kind of closed up business. But uh, luckily enough that because we were, you know, being the manufacturer, we were able to kind of move very quickly and switch our business model into a distribution business model and to take care of the accounts that were selling the product. So some of the infrastructure was already in place here in the U.S. with the distribution. Was your customer support, do you still have the same customer support that they had before or did you create your own uh, division, your own department? So we were we were handling the customer support on the massage massage chair side initially. So, so what would happen is when you bought a Berkline chair that had a one eight hundred number, what it would go was go to the coziest after sales service division. Uh, it didn't go uh, to Berkline services. So we had the backbone already set up. Good. We didn't have a real distribution center set up, you know, because we were just supplying. We had we had a warehouse for parts, uh, for the servicing side only, but we didn't have we didn't have any stock. It was Berkline's responsibility to have the stock. In, in uh, stock in the U.S., so we had to get that side of the business set up relatively quickly, and you know, fortunately enough that we were able to do it within three months to make sure that we didn't the retailers didn't lose uh, too much momentum going forward in the business. So, so the uh, so the logistics was was what needed to be worked out, getting the chairs here, where to warehouse them, and then uh, and then contact your distributor, the existing distributor base, and get yeah. them to continue to sell the chairs. Yeah, yeah. I see. Okay. And now uh, I understand that, uh, uh, as you mentioned earlier, that Cozia chairs are made made in Xiaomen in the, in the manufacturing plant. But tell me yep. the process from from concept to, to distribution. What, what, what is that process? How's that? What's involved in that process in China? Obviously, there, there comes up uh, an idea for a designer, an idea, idea for, a, for a new chair model. Could you walk us through the process to to bring it to the states from design to manufacture to distribution. Okay, um, basically you know, the process is not that complicated. What we do is we look at our Cozier's existing lineup, and base we decide on what kind of positioning that where we could add a value to that existing lineup. So you know I'll sit there with my team in the U.S. And we'll brainstorm as as opposed, you know, where we, where we would like to be positioned, the price point, the the features and benefits, or what what our current lineup is currently lacking. And we'll sit down, we'll brainstorm, and we'll write down all our ideas as, as in terms of uh, why we would like to see the additional value added to our existing lineup. Then I then basically we'll go to China, we'll present our ideas, we'll work with a designer in terms of getting the actual aesthetics of the product correct. Mm -hmm. um, then the design process happens. We review the designs. So usually it usually takes about three to four weeks to, to get that first initial stage going. So we'll have the design process with the layout of the features, what kind of features and benefits, where it's going to be positioned in our current product, existing product lineup. Uh, we look at the designs. We like the designs. Then we go for a stage where we make a prototype stage. So we use a handmade sample. So there's not, it's basically a quite of a a fragile process, so to speak, because you know these samples can get broken pretty easily. But it's a handmade sample to to produce the aesthetics effect and also the functionality effect. Uh, we do a run once 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 those samples are created, we test those samples out in China. This is all done in China. We we'll review those samples, we'll make some fine tweaks and fine changes to it, and then we'll probably send the prototype to the U.S. Get our sales, rest of our sales team. You know, we have about forty-two sales 
members, part of the Cozier team, get some of their opinions in terms of uh, if they believe there's some tweaks or some positionings that might not be right for certain markets, um, then we try to go through the whole process, back to step one again, go through the whole process again, uh, review that, structurally finalized, aesthetically finalize the details, and then we go into the tooling stage. Uh, the tooling stage usually takes anywhere from three to six months, depends on the complexity wow. of, the, of the item. You know, it's, it's actually a quite a huge investment in terms of developing one massage chair from scratch, actually. Mm. It's not a small figure. Um, so three to six months, and then once the tooling stage is completely, we do engineering samples, and we do quality control testing samples. The samples get tested strenuously for a month to two months, depending on the, if we need to speed up the process, we want, the, want, to, want to run the process as smoothly and slowly as possible. Um, and then we go to a trial production stage. So we test the production lines, make sure the production lines are all set up to, max, to maximize the efficiency to see if there's any kind of issues producing this new chair down the line. Then there's an evaluation of the test production line. And once that's done, everything is a go ahead and then we go into production. Wow. Well, what is that? What is that total time period from concept to shipping out? Usually anywhere from twelve months uh, to eighteen months. Wow, and that's How, usually the time frame. Yeah, that surprises me. I did, especially the tooling. I didn't realize the tooling took so long. I know you've got to create molds and you've got to create yeah. all the all the, uh, the, the, the 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 hardware to create the mold to create the the product. But I was I'm surprised yeah. it takes that long. Yeah, usually it, 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 you leave about 45 days to, to complete the tooling, and then you know, after 45 days you can do the first shots of the tools, and then there's always a fine tweak stage. So you know, depending on the number of tools that you need to make, and then fine tuning those molds to go together, to come together, it's usually between three or six months wow. to, on the safe side. You know. And how many months? We, we can ship, but. You know, we, 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 we tend to don't like to rush things, especially with an expensive item like this. Yeah. So we rather take our time to make sure to get it right in the first, first shot. Right. And how many models do you have, Mark, in play? Wow. Uh, with just the Cozier lineup currently, we are selling uh, 14 different massage chair models. Wow. Um, but, you know, we ideally, I think for, for us, because, you know, we, we, we've been in the massage chair business with Cozier directly in the U.S. market after Berkline Wave for about 20, 21 months now. Um, we've been in the actual massage business since 1994, but in terms of uh, doing our own distribu distribution models since uh, about 21 months ago. So we were in the process of seeing what was working, what was not working, and trying to fine-tune our lineup. But I think going forward as, as a company that wants to cater to, to the majority of the market, um, you know, we will have to have at least ten to eleven different models in order to do this, do so. Well, when you when you combine the fact that you have fourteen models, and you combine yep. the fact that you've only been doing it for twenty four months in the U S. Yep. And and it takes you know twelve months to create a model. You're 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 working on different models simultaneously. You, obviously, you're working on maybe two or three or four models at a time. I I would guess is that yep. is that a correct assessment? 